What's up, guys? Jonathan Dane here. I have another little snippet that we also call Boost Bits internally here at Client Boost, um, where we bring people who are what I call our chefs in the lab that are cooking up recipes, not anything Breaking Bad related, but more so marketing related. <laughs> and uh, today you're going to be hearing from, from Spencer Curry, and we're going to be talking about something called the bottom feeding approach, which is pretty dang cool. Um, and a lot of things that people are scared to take advantage of, but if, if the execution is correct, um, you will see it be very successful for you. So listen up and uh, enjoy, and um, let's see where this takes us. Ever wonder why some companies grow faster than others? What are they doing differently? And what are their secret ingredients? That's what this podcast is all about. Welcome to Boost Sauce. So this is an interesting episode because I have a really good friend who also works here. His name is Spencer Curry. He is the tallest human being at the office. We, <laughs> we don't know if he's the tallest guest yet because- We'll confirm. Well, yeah, everybody else has just been on like the other side of their computer. And so I don't know their height. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty confident if I would put my money on you being yeah. the tallest, you might be the tallest. I'd be confident too. If I were to put my money on the ping pong game between you and I- I love we that. don't want to go there. I love when it comes to the second conversation. It's that you can beat me in ping pong. Yeah, I have to tell everybody too. I'm I'm pretty proud. Very being, proud. I guess I'm not the reigning champ unless I bring home the 2020 championship. You gotta be yeah. Nick. I gotta be Nick. Frick. Okay. Anyways, everybody listening, everybody watching. Um, this is another installment of something that, uh, again, Client Boost has been really, really good at from a terminology, coining new things, new approaches, techniques, things like that. Um, and so. We have today Spencer Curry, who is a, well, your new role. What's your, what's yeah. your new title? Yeah, so I'm a director of lead generation. Okay. So I work primarily helping B2B companies figure out not only how to get more leads, but turn them into quality. Because that it. seems to be the biggest issue. Yeah. Because um, anyone can now go into digital advertising, turn on a dis display campaign, get a billion clicks, billion leads. And then when it actually comes to measuring MQLs and SQLs, they realize they have nothing. So... That's kind of the goal. That's a nice <laughs> nugget you just gave there. So my joke that he so rudely interrupted me with was saying that he's a human flounder, which is a fish that's on the bottom of the ocean. And because today we're going to be talking about something called the bottom feeding approach or bottom feeder approach. Yeah. Bottom, bottom feeding, feeding approach. Bottom yeah. feeding approach. Okay. So like I brambled on earlier, this is something where we figure out something that works really well. We don't know if anybody else is doing it. So we yeah. just gave it a random name. Mm -hmm. We had the bloom technique before. I don't even know if you knew that name. That's a new thing we mm -hmm. just came with, with Matt and Graham and Tiff. Now we have the bottom feeding approach. Mm. We have single keyword ad groups. We have the breadcrumb technique, you know, all those kind of things. The bottom feeding approach, what the, what is that? Yeah, so I think going back to how it kind of all came about was the problem was we were working with a lot of companies who they were kind of maxing out, maxing out what they could get. Okay. They found out like either through using us or whoever that their they were kind of their CPA was as low as they get it and their conversions were as high as they can get it or leads rather. Yeah. Um, and so now we're tasked with, okay, they have funding, they have whatever, they can scale X amount. How do we get that extra volume while not sacrificing on quality? Mm -hmm. And so one big thing that we started doing was adding audience layers at the observation level for the technical Google ads uh, little tidbit. Explain um, that, explain what that means. Yeah, so if you don't have audiences on your campaigns, it's an observation mode. It doesn't affect any of your traffic. Yes, you can put bid adjustments on those audiences, but it doesn't affect the current bidding if you have, if you have it at 0%. So yeah. we add audience layers to all of our campaigns. And all we're trying to do is understand how do these audiences, when they're searching for the keywords targeted in the campaigns, how do they interact? How do, mm -hmm. what's, what are their micrometrics on Google Analytics? What are, what's, tell me everything about that audience and how they interact with our keywords and our campaigns. Yeah. And so we are finding that there's just weird correlations. Even if you don't think that audience is relevant to your business, I mean, random things were converting and looking yeah. really good. And so I was thinking of, you know, full broad keywords typically on Google, they don't convert well, the quality is trash, yeah. and so we don't even touch them. Right. But my thought was, well, what if from an understanding from our current search campaigns that have a certain amount of audiences that are converting really well, if we were to extract those audiences, add them to a campaign where we're just targeting full broad keywords mm -hmm. and make those audiences what we call targeting. So instead of observation, it's a targeting mode, which yeah. means only uh, the, your ad will only show when they're searching for that full broad keyword, but they also fit in that audience. Got it. So it's it's an additional layer of I have, of a, I have a great, if you don't mind my artistic no, uh, ability to explain this. So consider a Venn diagram. 
right? You have two circles that are encompassing each other. In the yeah. targeting mode of audiences, there's two There's two modes. There's yeah. observation and there's targeting. The targeting basically requires that a person has to type in that keyword uh, or the search term that triggers that keyword and be part of that audience to see the ad. In observation mode, like you mentioned earlier, you're just adding them to your campaigns. And yeah. so Google's gonna tell you, you can have, I don't, is there a limit? You to can inf- well, there is a limit, but for most, we haven't hit it yet. Yeah, for <laughs> so most for campaigns. Now, for now, it's infinite, but you can add yeah. an infinite amount of audiences to your current campaigns that are like your bread and butter and just see what Google tells you if they were you know, typing in that keyword and part of that audience. So it'll give you the statistics, like Spencer said, the micrometrics at each audience layer. And then from there, you basically figure out which audience yeah. is good to then add to the broad match campaigns. Exactly. And that's when you then switched it to targeting. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. So that's the goal is, you know, if if our hypothesis is that all full broad keywords are trash, not gonna be in quality. Yeah. Well, what if we could challenge that with adding an additional layer of what I would say the only other qualifier we can make is an audience layer in right. Google search. Right. And so it was finding out how do we combine those two things together? Because once if we're able to then extract those high high converting audiences and make them work with full broad keywords, we've just opened up a mass new market mm-hmm. of keywords that we can mine for mm-hmm. that we would have originally not deemed quality or even gone after with our current set of keywords right. in our campaigns, but now we're actually opening ourselves too. So is the the reason for the name, the bottom feeding approach, yeah. is that because like you take bait, you throw it in the ocean and all <laughs> like exact match, phrase match, modified broad match, they're eating as much as they can yeah. of that bait before it drops to the exactly. bottom floor? Exactly, so the full broad should just be like, if. Theoretically, in a perfect world, you have all of the quality words that you can think of and that you've been working on to build over the last year, five mm-hmm. years, 10 years, mm-hmm. where full broad with this audience layer is now giving you exactly that. Yeah. Everything that you haven't gotten to eat up yet, it's somehow still trickling through your net. Yeah. You're now the the flounder, just eating everything <laughs> The up. bottom feeding, that's the only fish <laughs> we could think of that yeah. is on the bottom of the floor. Um, so sometimes, do, have you seen that the volume of the broad match plus the audience in targeting mode has more volume than the other campaigns all combined or really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen that and it's funny because there's just, there's an infinite amount of synonyms and the way people are. Mm, I love cinnamon. (laughs) Synonyms. Got it, got uh, it. That people are typing in that I would have never thought of or that even like like a spy food that we, that no comparison targeting yeah. that are just out there mm-hmm. and they're super long tail and they're one impression, one click type of searches. Yeah. But there's an again. infinite amount exactly yeah. where we're only going after things that, you know, when we're pulling things into skags, we have filters for like at least five impressions and two clicks. Well, right. there's tons of more searches out there that are completely random. That will probably never happen again, but are relevant to our business right. that we're just not targeting. Yeah. Um, and so that's where opening our net up a little bit and again, letting the bait trickle down to, yeah. to eat up at the bottom has been very, very effective for us. What do you think is like, cause we you mentioned Skags, people might not know about the single yeah. keyword ad groups, something that we definitely didn't coin, but definitely made more popular um, with our content and how we, I think we're select number one on Google organic for it. Um, we even changed that structure up. We actually haven't come out with it yet. Yeah. Um, what do you think stay is tuned. like, yeah, stay tuned. What do you think <laughs> is the future of the bottom feeding approach? Uh, so full transparency. Oh, sno- wait a second. Yeah, this is going to get real. Wait, hold on. I'm going to hit all three at the same time. It better be a big nugget you're about to drop. Is it? Well, I'm just going to say. No, wait, wait. Don't say it yet. But is it going to be good? Yeah. Okay, one second. Okay, all three. Now go. I'm going to say no more audiences. Just broad. Just broad. Okay, why? Because of Google's algorithmic bidding, their, their automated bidding strategies. Yeah. They're getting better and they're getting smarter. Nice. As of right now, I would not suggest anyone do it as their new method or way to start a campaign or if you're an agency taking over a campaign. Yeah. But for accounts that are in decent health and have a high amount of conversion volume and can afford a 30 day to 60 day learning period, yeah. it is getting smarter. So if people were to take some tactical nuggets, mm-hmm. no pun intended, um, from this, would you say that if they were gonna go full broad, no audiences, yeah. what kind of bidding strategy? Target CPA. Target CPA. Yeah. Um, and I would suggest that only if your account has at least 100 conversions in the last 30 days. Okay, if account you don't, wide. Account wide. Got it. If you don't have that, then just think of that ammo, like ammo in your chamber. Yeah. If you're 
g- giving to Google to shoot and find as many conversions as possible. Yeah. If you have a hundred, you're basically shooting blanks. Got it. So it's just too hard. I don't know if I understand that analogy, but it sounds cool. Yeah. Um, wait, you so you don't like guns? No, I, 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 I guess <laughs> let's talk about, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um, so my understanding too, is like what percentage, let's say that somebody is spending just easy math, a hundred dollars yeah a day and they are getting a hundred conversions a month. Mm-hmm. What percentage of that would you give from like a research and development aspect to that full broad campaign? Yeah. So with anything like that, that's a completely new initiative. You don't know how it's going to react. Yeah. I always stay around 15 to 20%. Okay. Maybe even less depending on how, if you're an agency, how, yeah. how strict your client is with budget. Right. Um, or if you're your own business and you want to be careful, I'm anywhere between the 10 and 20% range just to start off yeah. because there's no problem in starting slow gathering the initial results and yeah. saying, wow, this is actually working really well. It's been on other campaigns. Let's take this up to 50. Let's take this up to 70. Yeah. And then, you know, eventually. I, I, I guess, you know, depending on, you know, who's listening, whether you are the, the advertiser yourself and you're listening to this and you are, you have a pretty tolerant threshold for risk. Yeah. You can go up higher in that percentage and you learn faster, I assume. Yeah. Would you say so? Yeah. But if you're not and like, you're really risk averse, um, you know, go, go low, but I feel like there should always be some portion of like R and D for any advertiser 100%. out there that's doing anything. If okay. you're not trying the newest betas or the newest strategies, then you're going to get left behind. Then the are list. you really living? Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think you are. Um, okay, cool. This is, this is super rad. Yeah. Um, anything that I didn't ask you about anything that you think is, is valuable for people to know? I mean, just to clear things up because I feel like I, I refuted myself and saying to audiences when this whole thing is on the bottom feeding approach, I just want to say <laughs> the bottom feeding approach for advertisers today I think is the safer way to start yeah. that process. Yeah. Um, because again, you know that those audiences, once they've been added to your other campaigns and you've gathered all that data, you understand, okay, these audiences are really quality audiences for our product or service. So there really is no harm in adding those to the targeting level for your new full broad campaign just right. to start slow. But for you know anyone who's listening who has you know a big budget and is looking for things to test and take to the next level, Going full broad, no audiences, and an automated bidding strategy uh, is going to be the future. Is that 2.0? It's 2.0. It's a little too soon to talk about right now, but <laughs> yeah. we'll come out with another episode. Well, yeah. Spencer, Mr. Flounder, 6'7", second place in the office in ping pong. Thank yeah. you for being here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you ca- caught that roast. <laughs> okay, good. I just wanted to see a giggle. No, um, I can say. We'll, I am, ha- we'll have you back. Too. Yeah. Sounds Thank good. You. Of course. Right. Take care, guys.